There are lots of ways to host an application, but how do you know which makes the most sense for you and your company? Join us as we talk with Thunkable about how they made it happen on this episode of Stack Chat. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit more about what Thunkable does? Sure. Thunkable is a platform that allows you to build mobile apps without code. So if you're a person that has an idea and you're not an engineer, which not everyone is, you can uh, snap some blocks together, drag some components onto the screen, and uh, bring your idea to life. And we have about half a million users and about a million apps built. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about, from the architecture side, uh, how Thunkable managed the server-side application that people then use to build their own applications? Uh, sure. We started off with a pretty simple architecture. Uh, we had a small user base just trying to get it out there. So we had a single instance connected to a cloud Mongo and cloud Redis. And the, the database is scaled automatically, but that single instance led to some issues. It was a, a manual deploy, so whenever we deployed, it went down. And uh, also we had um, a lot of, uh, if you had an unhandled exception, it would bring down the whole server, so. So I think this is a common problem that a lot of startups and small teams run into as they try to focus on the application and don't unfortunately spend as much time on the infrastructure. How did your team choose to address these problems? We pretty quickly realized we needed multiple instances, so we spun up a couple more, but we were still doing manual deploys, and so now we had to do three of them. Uh, and it was great that we had less downtime, that's super important, and that the exceptions weren't taking down the entire service, but it was taking too much time. So we quickly went to a Docker build, which allowed us to automated build that we could build on our own machines. We'd push it to Google Cloud and then just deploy it to each of the instances manually. And then shortly after that, we realized that Kubernetes could do this for us. So we just allow Kubernetes to deploy our images to as many instances as we need. So now you're using managed infrastructure and you get all the benefits of that, but it sounds like you're still doing the build manually. Correct. It took about a half an hour on our local machines. So we, we took a look at our Google Cloud build and we got it up and running there. And it wasn't necessarily faster, but we weren't sitting there watching it, and which is basically faster. So the other thing was before we weren't exactly sure what was on production. It was kind of like up to us to make sure that we deployed the right stuff. But now we just tag our master branch and then Google Cloud Build kicks off and deploys it to our staging environment. So it's uh, yeah, quite a bit easier. So it sounds like your team learned a lot over time and then implemented those changes. But if you knew everything you knew now, back then, what would you have done differently? Uh, the first thing I definitely would have done was just started with Docker and Kubernetes. It was nice to live through the pain points that it solves, but I could have watched a three minute video. One thing we did do right was every few weeks we'd look at our kind of DevOps process and see where our pain points were and try to address them. And some of the things that we've fixed recently is our Docker build, we've added uh, Docker layer caching so that we can speed up our builds from like 30 minutes to five minutes if it's just a quick uh, backend fix. So that's been really helpful. The other thing is making our Docker image much smaller has led to faster employments. And we did that with our multi-stage builds, which allow the final product to have just what it needs to run in production. And it's always having faster deploys is really important when you're constantly pushing things and want the ability to quickly deploy a hotfix or new features. Thank you so much for coming in here and telling us about how your team kind of navigated both maintaining the application and improving the infrastructure at the same time. Anytime. Want to try using Google Cloud Build and Kubernetes for yourself? Check out the tutorial in the description to get some hands-on experience. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe for more great Google Cloud Platform content. We'll see you next time on Stack Chat.